guys, this is Super Review Show for an episode of Rock Shock. This is the show where I break down artists and albums, specifically albums, that have anniversaries, or the album's just that good, you should definitely check out this album no matter what, and here we are today, talking about the 20th anniversary of one of the most pioneering rock albums of the 2000s, mind you, Green Day's American Idiot. This album came out today, September 20th, in 2004. Um, first things first, I have seen Green Day Live twice now. I saw them in 2021, and I saw them this year in 2024, uh, both on the Hell Mega Tour and their Saviors Tour. And the more I realized it, they just played the whole album live on the Saviors Tour, which is a phenomenal. Can't be- I in shock that they played Dookie and American Idiot start to finish, and the greatest hits too. It's crazy. But I digress. American Idiot, in 2002... Green Day were in a little bit of a funk. They were trying to figure out what's our next step because Warning wasn't a big album for them. It kind of like it's a good album, but it didn't sell as much as we thought it would uh, back in the day. Coming off of like the heels of like they kind of dropped the ball after Dookie in '94. So '94 was Dookie, Insomniac, then Nimrod had good Rinse Time Your Life on there, and then that catapulted multi platinum success. But then and Warning came out, comes out in 2000. And it's not something that's very uh, commercial. It was a good album. It just wasn't as commercial as they wanted it to be. They had to do a, com- a career-saving album at this point. It's 2002. I'm not getting political. I'm just telling you how it is, how it was back in the day with Billy Joe Armstrong. He, you know, he's gone on and said some crazy things about his life and whatnot, too, but I'm just telling you the facts, as I always will. Green Day, Billy Joe was listening to the radio, and he heard someone say, I'm proud to be a redneck, or whatever, or something along the, lines of, along, along the lines of that. And he said, oh my God, why would you want to be proud of something like that? The ball started rolling from there. Thus, he created American Idiot. That one little thing made him say, you know, I stand a certain way in life. I want to project myself with an album. And sure enough, despite how the, uh, the Iraqi war was going on, uh, at the time, B- uh, George Bush was running for office again in a, for the presidency. And Green Day puts out American Idiot in 2004. And what a staple of an album, too. The album actually became, in 2005, the radio was dominated with singles like Boulevard of Broken Dreams, Holiday, American Idiot, Wake Me Up When September Ends. It's a loose concept album, too. Uh, this album has... It tells a story of the Jesus of Suburbia, which is a character. The second song on the record, it's a, it's a long song. But this song, it, it solidifies him as a character. And I say this, I've said this for a number of years now. If you listen to an album from start to finish, you have, you have a different experience of it every single time. So if you listen to American Idiot from start to finish, you're going to hear American Idiot, you're going to hear Jesus of Suburbia, and then the rest of the story comes into play until Wake Me Up With September Ends happens. Wake Me Up With September Ends was a song, one of their biggest hit songs, mind you. Um, that Green Day put out. It's about. It has nothing to do with the album, but they were just looking to make a hit single, and they released it as a single with uh, the album. And therefore, uh, it's about Billy Joe Armstrong and his dad. Cause he he lost his dad to cancer when he was ten. And he didn't really spend a lot of time with him. So if you are out there and have a father, be happy that you have a father. Because it's not easy growing up knowing that your mom is. Raising you by herself. And he has five other siblings, too. He's one of six kids. And he lost his dad when he was really young. And they all did support each other. And he's the most successful, mind you, because he was in Green Day. His high school band. Selling out stadiums around the world. But it's just crazy how, you know, he, didn't, he grew up without a father. And that's what that song is about. What he, you know, when my father's come to pass, you know, that's about his dad. So it doesn't fit into the story of the album. It was just a hit single off the record. Uh, and it's a beautiful song. It's a, it's a punk rock song, but it's a beautiful song too. Uh, I did hear it live on the Hell and Mega Tour, and I did hear it live on the Savior Tour recently. But it's it really has stood the test of time. That song, American Idiot, though, as a whole album, though, it's a loose concept album without the Who's, Quadrophenia, or Tommy. Yeah, you know, they started listening to different uh, st- artists around the time. Like they started listening to U two. They started listening to the Who, and they. There would have never would have never been American Idiot without like an albums like Tommy or Quadrophenia. If you've never heard, just on a side note, if you've never heard uh, Quadrophenia or Tommy by the Who, please get on that. That is a, an incredible concept album. Uh, both of them are, but that's where they came from, and they they just did a balls to the wall guitar driven album, 
and it became their comeback record. So it, it really has stood the test of time. It still sounds great to this day. And in 2000, think about the concept for a second. 2000, the year 2000, it's, you know, we're all awake. We're all, you know, we're alive because everyone's like, the world's going to end. Yeah, right. Um, but rock music at the time, and I'm not going to get too much into it, but rock music at the time was not really, it, it kind of petered off a teeny bit. I'm not saying it's dead because it's not, but it's interesting how they had green, you know, a band like Green Day said, let's just go balls to the wall. And then, and it, for some reason it stuck. Like, you know, like rock music, comparing to like, you know, something else for a sec. Rock music was like, here, here's a single by this band or this band. Didn't really stick to the wall as much. Like a, like a Fall Out Boy obviously did or, you know, or Weezer kind of did to an extent. But Green Day was like the, man, we can, we're going to cement ourselves and we're going to plow through everything. Um, and at this point, man. But yeah, this record, this record's a really great album in general. If you've never heard it from start to finish and you've only listened to American Idiot or only listened to Boulevard of Broken Dreams or Waking Up with Some Temper Ends, do yourself a favor and listen to the album from start to finish today. It's it, The record does turn 20 years old today, uh, September 20th to, from 2004. So hard to believe that it's come, been this long since Green Day's put out this album. And it has stood the test of time. It is. I, I can't wait to hear like the 30th anniversary tour of like 21st Century Breakdown, or whatever, or American Idiot. They're they're gonna tour, and they're gonna play the hits no matter what. And they this is definitely a big, big, big staple part of their career too. Because and afterwards they went on to do 21st Century Breakdown. Go check out what we did on that on our Career Perspectives uh, podcast. But American Idiot kind of like re-solidified them as a major chart force, and also a um, not just a major chart force, but a, a band with something to say. Because then they were from the 90s, you know, 1994, 2004, 10 year gap. They made two huge records in the matter of 10 years in two separate decades. And they were both massive, massive, massive selling records. It's crazy. So um, a, a little bit of some backstory there for American Idiot. But yeah, um, overall, this is a great record overall. I have a happy 20th anniversary to American Idiot. Uh, Billy Joe Armstrong, Mike Dirt, and Trey Cool. You guys are great. It was rock hard. Your show was awesome back um, on the New York date of the uh, Saviors tour, which was a lot of fun, of course. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for us, guys. Thanks so much for watching this review. Rock the episode of Rock Talk. Um, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Don't forget to follow us on our social media pages as well, simply at The Super Review Show. But for all of your Rock Talk episodes and many more, keep luck on The Super Review Show. The J-Man is off the rock. We'll see you guys later.